Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations. At your service to talk some more about phased vertical antennas in the original presentation, phased vertical antennas, I said I would offer you a couple of examples and then I only offered one. Well, I always had in mind offering you more than one, so this is take two of phased vertical antennas. Consider again two quarter wavelength high vertical antennas over perfectly conducting ground or over real ground with so many radials in it that it's perfectly conducting for all intents and purposes. But suppose that this time instead of separating them by one half wavelength in free space you separate them by a quarter of a wavelength in free space. That is uh, simply half the distance that you would get by using the half wavelength formula. A quarter of a wavelength in free space. On, on uh, 80 meters, that would be about 66, well, it would be about 70 feet. On 40 meters, about 35 feet. Uh, on 80 meters, it would be about 20 meters. The formula, the metric formula, I can remember easily. The distance in meters equals 75 divided by the frequency in megahertz. That's the distance in meters. To get feet, well, you just convert meters to feet. So imagine that you do that. And then these two antennas, which we call X and Y, separated by a quarter of a wavelength, suppose that you feed them in such a way you connect two sections of feed line together and then can send that along to your radio just as you did uh, before with the half wavelength antennas. But this time, one of these sections, say, the, say section X, is a quarter of a wavelength longer electrically plus one quarter of a wavelength electrically. Well, I could spell electrically. That means that you have to take the velocity factor of the line into account. You make this line one quarter of a wavelength shorter, this line over here to Y, one quarter of a wavelength shorter than the section that goes to, to X. And then, of course, at this point right here, you are going to need some sort of a tuning network so that you get... 50 ohms to match to your coaxial cable that runs along to the radio. And these antennas are resonant. These two quarter, uh, these two um, uh, feed line sections don't have to be any particular lengths. It's just that one of them has to be a quarter of a wavelength longer than the other electrically. And it makes sense to keep them as short as possible to minimize losses. And when you do that, you're going to get an interesting state of affairs. This antenna is going to lag this one by 90 degrees. That is to say, the phase of the signal that goes into antenna X is going to be 90 degrees or a quarter of a cycle behind uh, the signal that goes into Y. So now, if you are looking at the antenna from the east, let's once again say that north is towards the top of our map and you are looking straight down on these antennas from a great height. This of course then off to the right would be the easterly direction. This signals already 90 degrees behind this one in phase. As it traverses this quarter wavelength span it's going to get 90 more degrees uh, out of phase. So in the easterly direction, we're going to see phase cancellation. That's going towards the east. Now towards the west, the situation is exactly reversed. This signal's already at zero degrees phase as it traverses the gap, a quarter of a wavelength distant to get to X, it's going to get 90 degrees 
further behind in phase. So it's going to look like it's in phase with x in the westerly direction. That doesn't look very much like a w, does it? So we're going to get phase coincidence or reinforcement. At intermediate directions, say off in the north, the south, the northwest, the northeast, these intermediate directions, we're going to see intermediate phases. But we're going to end up with a unidirectional radiation pattern that favors the west. So it's the westerly direction that's going to see the best results. This antenna is going to be directional like that. If we were to plot this on a polar coordinate plane, a, uh, a polar antenna directionality pattern plane, what we would see, let's go much, 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 much higher, higher up above these antennas now. So far up that they both look like one single dot. And we can now erase all of this extraneous and irrelevant gibberish. Except for this arrow right here, which indicates a westerly directionality. And we're looking at this antenna system from many miles up. And we have a polar coordinate system such that north is up this way, south and east is over that way. What we're going to get is what they call a cardioid pattern. There's going to be a null towards the east, but some radiation in every other direction. But the, fur the closer we get to west, the better and better it's going to be. And so the pattern is going to look something like that, like a valentine heart tilted on its side. And the reason that they call this pattern a cardioid is because it looks like a, a heart symbol. You know, like the heart symbols you see on these heart-friendly foods or supposedly heart-friendly foods or how Valentine's Day is supposed to be all about the heart, etc., etc. Interesting, they might call it cardioid day. And then we could call this radiation pattern a valentine. Now isn't that something? Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, signing off, saying 73, and so long for now.